The Supreme Court's overdue admonishment holds out hope for India's secular, liberal and democratic character. And Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra has stirred up the political pot a bit. The very fact that the Supreme Court had to admonish the government and, and that Rahul Gandhi is taking out a long march of Bharat Jodo Yatra from south to north it points to the state of secular liberal India in the 21st century. What we are witnessing in India has its roots in the past. Not 2014, but 2002 was the year when India was actually polarized. Until today, informed opinion remains divided on the desirability of this seismic change which has transformed the 20th century French into the 21st century mainstream. Good and evil have been redefined. We are not sure whether India is heading towards theocracy, oligarchy, totalitarianism or a toxic mix of the three. Let us go back in time when democracy and secularism were the cherished ideals of our freedom fighters. I'm talking of the era before 1947. Their idealism was inspired by Europe's socialist movement, which was influenced by the 1789 French Revolution. The founding fathers of India's constitution sought to banish discrimination and repression based on ethnicity, religion, caste, region, and gender. The communal bloodbath that accompanied our independence only enforced the belief that secularism was the only viable means of forging an India that would be vibrant and democratic and where all citizens would have equal opportunities to lead a secure and dignified life. Sadly, the Bilkis Bano case has become a telling comment on how dirty communal politics can destroy idealistic aspirations. No matter what the Saffronite demagogues say, Nehruvian secularism is an absolutely practical creed that reduces the potential for social distress. Its inclusive credo has roots in India's evolution over centuries. People from different parts of the world came and settled in the subcontinent, in the Indian subcontinent. The host communities were friendly and accommodating. This helped develop a pluralist and multicultural societal mindset that resulted in democracy taking firm roots in ancient India. Intermingling of races began as a natural corollary to mutual tolerance and peaceful coexistence. India became the original melting pot of races and ethnicities. It was natural for complications to arise in the land of this, in this land of mind-boggling diversities. But the people's inherent good sense kept potential frictions at manageable levels. Various beliefs, rituals and gods brought in by different settlers gradually merged into a harmonious whole. But this harmony was not always steady. There were ups and downs and there were challenges. So the first tactile fault lines developed with the rise of Buddhism and Jainism that seriously challenged the established Brahminical order. This is when Emperor Ashoka experimented with secularism out of sheer socio-political necessity. He enunciated certain principles or codes of conduct that would help administer the diversities and manage the contradictions. Much later, when the religious ethnic fault lines had become far more complex and daunting, 
emperor akbar formulated deen e ilahi which which he wanted to use as an instrument to forge a secular polity of course he failed the point is there was strong under undercurrents of secular tolerant culture in india's past which underscored our secular heritage and instincts these undercurrents had to wait for their manifestation until the middle of the 20th century 1950 to be precise when india became a sovereign republic and adopted a secular liberal constitution after we won the independence we opted for democracy without a state religion perhaps india would have remained secular and liberal even if hinduism had been declared a state religion many secular countries were which are far more liberal united kingdom for instance united states for instance canada for instance they have got state religions of their own and yet they are very very liberal and very secular so if we had adopted hinduism as our state religion i don't think it uh, would have affected our secular credentials adversely but then that is a debate for some other time what we need to understand is that despite the two nation theory our leaders bravely stood by their commitment to a secular liberal india today one wonders what happened to that commitment why does our secular fabric resemble more a rag with gaping holes in it than a resplendent banner proudly fluttering in a pleasant liberal and liberating breeze perhaps it has something to do with the degeneration of the earlier earnestness that became a cynical convenience over a period this cynical convenience was exposed when the supreme court verdict in the shabano case was overturned by the muslim women protection on divorce act 1986 legislated by the rajiv gandhi government as if this folly was not enough rajiv gandhi was also instrumental in the opening of the ayodhya temples locks such acts irreversibly damaged the secular liberal credentials not only of the indian national congress but also of india right from our school days it has been drilled into our heads that we were morally superior to other nations where racial religious and all other forms of intolerance ruled the roost we were a hori civilization with proud ideals to uphold the moral high ground we occupied thanks to the likes of mahatma gandhi pandit nehru and others now seems to slip away from under our feet the secular liberal indian has become a paradox has the moderate indian become an anachronism already perhaps the secular liberals have been running after a mirage falling down on the hot desert dunes of intolerance getting up and dusting off the scalding sands of suspicion and hatred to resume the evidently hopeless quest the optimists have not given up the hope of discovering the real oasis of tolerance and harmony an oasis that would offer rejuvenating sweet water to sustain the search for the idyllic world where children shall not be burnt alive women won't be raped and dismembered and nobody will fall victim to evil can rahul gandhi's bharat jodo yatra achieve this near impossible dream if rahul gandhi or the indian national congress really want to rejuvenate the party as well as the nation they will have to they will have to offer an ideology a world view a vision which is diametrically different from what bjp is offering to the nation the congress party cannot win the confidence of the voters if it keeps on trying to copy the bjp's agenda and uh, adopting soft hindutva it is not going to work they should focus on a liberal democratic ethos backed with an all inclusive 
developmental plan the complicit mainstream media has helped hate spewing demagogues to convince hindu educated unemployed youth that their jobs their women and their wealth will be snatched away by the other side it is so easy to convince frustrated juveniles that the only way they can live with dignity in their own homeland is by by wiping out those who are not not like this martin luther king once observed that a riot is at the bottom the language of the unheard fine he in the context of the american realities what he said was true but this is not always true any everywhere in the modern world a riot is a madness that methodically cleanses out the unwanted to the majority we saw this in the nazi germany when hitler resorted to the final solution do not want them if you don't like them wipe them off 2002 gujarat riots were part of this global derangement as is its aftermath numbers matter in a convoluted manner 58 hindus burned alive in the sabarmati express so at least 10 times that number of muslims must be consigned to the inferno the reaction is much more than equal and opposite to the original ghastly action teach them a lesson ten eyes for one eye and let the nation damn well become blind but the blind seldom reach their destination and what is our destination today the term hindu conjures up the image of a barbarian who resorts to bloodletting triggered by hate and bloodlust steeped in medieval dogmas he projects the image of being the slave of primal passions no longer is he looked upon as the paragon of virtues which only till recently the hindu was considered as a paragon of virtues of tolerance being accommodative but now that image has vanished or rather tarnished he was considered the personification of the values the citizen of a civilized nation possesses the lights of vivekananda mahatma gandhi and other icons of our glorious cultural historical heritage must be shuddering in the heavens george bernard shaw wrote in common sense without war we turn our temples of peace promptly into temples of war and exhibit our parsons as the most pugnacious characters in the community i venture to affirm that the sense of scandal given by this is far deeper and more general than the church thinks especially among the working classes who are apt either to take religion seriously or else to repudiate it and criticize it closely when a bishop at the first shot abandons the worship of christ and rallies his flock round the altar of mars he may be acting patriotically necessarily manfully rightly but that does not justify him in pretending that there has been no change and that christ is in effect mars the straight forward course and the one that would serve the church best in the long run would be to close our professedly christian churches the moment war is declared by us well that is george bernard shaw he could be skating in his in his criticism and even when he is being sarcastic for us in india it is time for introspection to repair the damage done to our secular superstructure the nation has more pressing problems than undoing the medieval injustices or rewriting history and those medieval injustices may be real or imagined the indian national congress needs to go back to its basics these basics were assiduously fashioned by pandit nehru the basics that were discarded by indira gandhi when she resorted to emergency to save her seat her position and promote sanjay gandhi as the next prime minister of india and when she played the dangerous divide and rule game in punjab and assam 
Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra holds out a ray of hope. Perhaps he realizes that it will be suicidal for India to halt the quest for a post-mortem culture. Whether it does so or not, let us, the people of India, come out of the darkness of mutual recognitions and distrust and move towards a brilliant future. Let us reject the regressives and bring the progressives back to power, whoever they may be, not necessarily the Indian National Congress. Whichever party, new or old or yet to be born, that party should be voted for. And that is the only way. It is possible even at this stage.